This is Twit. Have you heard uh, the new uh, Notebook LM, uh, Google's uh, Gemini right. Notebook LM that makes a podcast out of anything? Yes, I passed my resume through it, and it's the most... <laughs> I, I will say there's a level of hallucination that's both so weird that is both kind of worrying, but also very like, wow, I sound so much better than what I put into it. Um, <laughs> and it is a it is both, I think, a very uh, interesting display of the technology, but it also, I think, underscores the limitation I passed my resume, I passed a couple of wiki pages, I put in a product web page, I think it was like for a soda. Um, and you tend to you tend to see where it repeats or the familiarity of certain aspects of it. But I mean, I, I, I if you want to hear your entire life's work kind of spoken about in a podcast, uh, in, a, in, in a very kind of a conversational podcast. So give it a, Roger, give it a when it when you did this, did it did it have basically like two anonymous ish podcast host talking about let's yes. talk about roger chang yes and they just talk to you up yeah yeah, yeah it, there's a male there's a female voice yeah. voice and they uh, sound like podcasters because they sound kind of dopey and like oh yeah wow well, like you know i mean they're kind of it's very ad hoc uh, kind of ad libby right yeah it's very it has a very conversational like whoa whoa hold on so you're saying and then they <laughs> drop in the i even i even dropped wait, in an article about, you're Deep saying that roger chang Valley. worked at revision three is that what you're telling me I mean, it said I was at the cusp of of the cable TV revolution. Oh yes, like, you were. and it's just like, wow, this sounds so much better than what I typed in. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. it. Sounds like you do too, Roger, because on the one hand, it makes everything sound kind of mediocre, but on the other hand, it's kind of amazing that it can do that, right? There, there, there will be a time where so much of it that we find so kind of jaw dropping or, or eyeball popping will become so rote and generic that people will automatically dismiss it in the same way that when Photoshop allowed you to alter images for the first time in a way that seems semi-realistic and you didn't need to use airbrushing or anything, people's like, whoa, this is going to change things. But people got used to it. And then you say, hey, this totally looks Photoshop because, <laughs> you know, you know, people, people acclimatize to the change and then they start seeing the seams and they start pointing it out. There are moments when it's really surreal. Like, I know a podcast gets translated into several languages and the tool they use um, you know, it's one thing for, for it to sort of like listen to the podcast and translate it into Spanish. But the, the thing it's it's one of the places where AI is actually working phenomenally well, because it not only turns the podcast into Spanish, but it makes it sound like the person hosting the podcast as if they were speaking Spanish. So their accents relatively intact, except, you know, tra you know, speaking Spanish. It's really surreal um, when it works, when it doesn't work. Yeah, I think Roger... Leo, the whole moment where you're just like, that was almost like a human, but not. <laughs> I mean, it, it's weird because you bring up the translation thing. The the one thing that I remember distinctly from uh, uh, the whole meta uh, uh, conference or um, uh, uh, convention or, 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 or a keynote that they did was, you know, with the meta glasses and then doing the real time translation translation yeah which is kind of like kind of like the golden like like the the uh, the, the stanley cup of, of, of like real time it's the babel uh, fish from from hitchhiker's guide i mean it's yeah it would be amazing i mean but you know i have to say every tech company has shown this demo <laughs> and i'm still waiting for it to actually happen you can kind of do it with your phone have you tried this at all uh, you know, you're in Mexico and you say, hey, uh, how much are the tacos? And I, it does, Google it's, Translate I did, I did is this, amazing. I just yeah, had this done that. to me two week, two weekends ago. Someone wanted uh, some change to park at the beach because we were at the, the beach over in Santa Monica. And uh, she didn't speak any English. So her daughter came out. She must have been like 14. And she had her phone out and she wow. just had it say what they wanted. Um I mean, you know, it's it's definitely it's definitely a technology that I think will be the will be the kind of like it, when it works and it works for everybody. Like you're just not you're not tied to a specific platform. You're not tied to a specific service. It's going to blow up because now people will have a way to converse that 
you don't necessarily need to, to, to spend a lot of time, which is not to say that you shouldn't spend time learning a different language. I think it opens up your, your, your concept of, of different uh, uh, things, um, being from a bilingual family. But it is, it is, it is very much like I, it's, I think it, it will go a long way to helping people uh, interact uh, in situations that might have been a little more clumsy otherwise. Totally. I've been in scenarios where I am the stranger in a strange land, and that was the only tool I had available to me to communicate with those around me. And it served its purpose better than expected. And this is even going back a few years now through across several languages and everything from trying to order a meal in a restaurant I otherwise wouldn't have set foot in to just people on the street. Or I keep going back to Google Translate, but they have an ability just to have a message you can flash up on your phone in large text. And that was useful for just quickly signaling to someone who who may not be that adept at their own language even and being able to just uh, get, get something across quickly or in-depth conversations like, oh, you know what? I need to, I need to understand fully what this person is, is trying to get across to me. And you can literally lay that device between you and them and just both look at the screen to reference what's being said and translated in real time. And it is, it, it impresses me when it works perfectly. I had a several hour layover in Istanbul coming home and I took an Uber to just because I wanted like I'd never been to Turkey. And Turkish and is the, a hard U language. And That's the, a the, tough Uber, language. the Uber driver whipped out his phone and just basically wow. started yeah. having a conversation with me because he wanted to know what I was doing there and how much time I had. And cool. and we just had a, a short conversation just and then it, I give him credit. I didn't pull out any app. The Uber driver did. So, <laughs> so. You, you talked to, into his phone and it translated for him. No. So he he's he said something and he played it for me. And then he said he I forget what the app was. It might have been just Google Translate. You hit a button and yeah. it switches it from Microsoft Turkish does to English it. and Google then English to Turkish. Yeah. 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 And then some of them, I believe, oh, they'll just auto detect the language. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. They will. Yeah. And the cool thing is, I use Google's earbuds. And so I can have the translated speech go into my ear and they don't have to hear that repeated. And it makes it even more seamless that way, where it is very close to being like the babblefish, which is. It's the Star kind of, Trek Universal Translator. It yeah. is impressive. Patrick, is impressive. you're a writer, though. Do you ever think, uh, what do you think about AI and writing? There's a controversy <laughs> coming up uh, next month. <laughs> NaNoWriMo, the NaNoWriMo folks were saying, eh, it's okay to use AI. And then a lot of writers are saying, it is absolutely not okay to use AI for NaNoWriMo. Well, I think using AI for NaNoWriMo defeats the entire purpose yeah, of NaNoWriMo. Yeah, what are you, which what are you is to doing engage here? in the, the process of creation and become But maybe for inspiration it. or something like that, uh, you know? You know, there's... So, I've spent most of my adult life writing. I've taught people to write. I've helped people write. I've edited people's stuff. I've turned web articles into, you know, scripts. I've turned scripts into web articles. I've written for, you know, blah, 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 right? So, so you know, I like books. Um, you know, yeah, you have a few and, behind you for people not watching the video. Looks like you're um, in a library. I, I, it's, it's the vibe we're going for here. But the, <laughs> uh, you know, so there's, it's interesting, right? There was a sort of a, you know, Somebody, a, a freelance client I worked with had a service. It was like a gig economy deal where you paid, you know, you had a 12-month contract, you paid however much per month, and they generated, you know, 6,000 words a month for you. It was trash. Um, it was yeah. bad. It's very uh, mediocre, I find, just well, like the Notebook no, no, no. LM stuff is. Well, hold, the, feels... hold that thought for a second, right? Because this was humans. Oh. And <laughs> none of them... You know, they didn't know what a lead paragraph was. Right, you know, right. they couldn't write a sixth grade essay. Um, you know, you were supposed to like tightly outline things and I would tightly outline things and they would not actually follow the outline. It was it was a mess. And, uh, you know, and when ChatGPT3 was released, the, the client I was working with, you know, ran something through ChatGPT3 and they're like, how does this compare to such and such? Oh, wow. And I was like, well, that's better than what the service is doing and it's uh, you know for all intents and purposes free um one of the things i know a lot of people who write content whether it's on the marketing side or the or the you know whatever side you want to take uh is that different tools do the job better than others um different services like chat gpt3 
got worse and worse over time. It was like the more people used it, the longer and weirder the sentences got. So it went from like te- you know, tight, clean copy with a solid lead to these sort of meandering things. Um, I don't imagine there's anybody in this podcast right now who hasn't done a Google search and thought to themselves, gosh, I really hate the SERP results being clogged up with this AI at the top. Yeah. Or what? Because <laughs> um, yeah. I've, I, you know, I, I don't think I get through three days in a row without looking at Google's summary of search results without being horrified or. Laughing. I stopped using Google. Um, I think yep, they're making yeah. a big mistake. I think they've gone way downhill. That was it's, one thing uh, I've kind of appreciated at Tech TV, especially was having a copy editor. Somebody could go over what I'd written, and it made me a better writer in the end. And that's where I see AI right now is one of the best tools available. Granted, it's taking jobs away from people who who study very hard to be very good at at the written word, but it is a wonderful tool to go through and take a look at. Hey, just take a look at what I've written. Is there anything obvious and glaring? It's- and then also for research, it is so much better to use a tool like GPT-4 or whatever you want. And, and it, as far as its ability to tell you where it's getting that information from and to present you with relevant facts about a particular topic, it's, I just, I, I enjoy it and I appreciate it for what I, it is. It's weird because I use chat GPT to, because I write a weekly column for, for the page, uh, DTNS patron, uh, patrons and I run it through ChatGPT to, to copy edit. Then I take that and I pass it through my wife, who's a copy editor. Uh, and she, there are still things that need to be cleaned up and there's still things that need to be done. Uh, but it does kind of shave off some of the, uh, the, some of the work. Um, I will say that some of the alternatives it offers tends to kind of bland uh, blandize uh, what you're writing. If you if you write in a specific voice, it tends to make it a little more generic, which I find kind of not helpful if you want to stand out. I also find for research, I still follow up with all the links to double check because there have been a few cases where it ChatGPT, but but Gemini uh, also does this, where it will confuse two very similar pieces of information as the same thing. And I I go through because the last thing you want to do is yeah this so and so happened to this person when it was in fact two different people with a very close sounding name. So it sounds like you guys are all bullish on AI. Is that fair to say? Anybody not? I am. I am bullish, but I'm also circumspect about yeah. what it can do. I think there's a, I think there's a hype cycle around AI for sure. Where where we we kind of had the same thing with big data. What a decade ago, everyone was saying you got to collect all the data. You'll right. be able to process it. You'll be able to find the best customers, and then right. you'll target them with ads straight to their eyeball. That you know that sell them that one you know product that no one else wants, but they want. It's not that I don't think AI, AI will be fruitful. I just think there's also a lot of uh, there's a lot of people trying to get into the space, and it tends to froth up things more so than uh, I think people would uh, understand it to be. I, I mean, think it's a wonderful assistant, and I encourage many people who may not even consider such a tool in their day to day lives. Uh, I know a lot of people in very blue collar industries that are being asked now to uh, prove themselves again within their say they've just been bought out recently and they need to be more technologically astute or however you want to put it. And that is a tool you can literally go to and just have a conversation with about maybe a subject you're not familiar with. I've also encouraged some of my young nieces and nephews. It's like, Hey, look, they're dealing with everything from like a class project where it was like, okay, here's a coding language you guys are working with to make an led turn on and off. I'm not 100% familiar with what it is you're working with there, but I can ask, say, ChatGPT4 to provide sample code for this and give you guys at least an idea it's a great of where to start. Yeah. yeah. It's a wonderful tool like that. Yeah. And every programmer I have come across in the last few years, everyone has a paid account for GPT and I, they are using that for as, the, as yeah. a base just to get the grind work done uh, as far as the, whatever project they're currently working on or trying to finish. I, I we just interviewed Kevin Pereira from from Attack oh, on the yeah, Show, yeah. and he actually uses ChatGPT to write, or not ChatGPT, another uh, generative AI to write code for him for for a thing he's working on. It's just like I don't really know how to code, but it works, and it works enough for for <laughs> what I need like to a, do. There's a recipe for disaster. Well, and and it, it does. I don't know it, what it's doing, but it seems to work. <laughs> I think there is a. I think that it it kind of reminds me of the WYSIWYG days of uh, uh, HTML yeah, editors where. Yeah, yeah. It, 
it did a lot of stuff for you, single. but at the yeah. same time, it was like you need to understand what the under what what you know what this command what this library does. Right. So if you need to fix something or change it, uh, you understand how to go about it. I've and, also oh. I was going to say, I've also never thanked a Google search, but I, I regularly <laughs> drop a thank you here and there to chat GPT. So Kevin it, Rose told me that. Says, always thank the AI. You yeah. never know. I'm you never, never know. Absolutely. You know it's coming. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, the News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.